Welcome to Warner Bros. World Abu Dhabi, the biggest indoor theme park in the United Arab Emirates. I'm extremely hyped for this park because according to some, this is the most beautiful theme park in the UAE at this moment. I went to SeaWorld Abu Dhabi yesterday. I thought that was the most beautiful one. So really curious to see if this one is really more beautiful than that one. That's right. I went to the UAE and was able to finally take up some parks from my theme park bucket list in Dubai and Abu Dhabi. And in seven episodes, I'm taking you guys with me while exploring these new territories. Today we're exploring the world's biggest indoor theme park. So here we are, Warner Bros World at Yes Island in Abu Dhabi. Now this park is obviously a theme to all the big Warner Bros franchises. There's the Looney Tunes, the Flintstones, Batman, Superman and other DC characters. Scooby-Doo, Tom and Jerry. And they're actually working on a huge new Harry Potter area in this park. So really curious what they will offer there as it will be refreshing to see new Harry Potter rides when, which are yeah, not built by Universal actually. So as you can see, lots of things to explore here. But first we have to get inside of course. And entrance to this park is 345 dirham, which is around 87 uh, euros or 94 US dollars. And that is just for a single day entrance. Now the parks around here in, in Yes Island actually such as Ferrari World, Yes Water World, Sea World and, and this park also offer four park tickets which is 675 dirham or around 171 euros or 184 US dollars or something so that might be a better option actually. Now as you can see we made it in the park. We are inside of a Warner Bros World and I'm really excited to be here actually. I mean this already looks pretty spectacular here. We entered the park here at the Warner Bros Plaza and it's really amazing how you are actually entering the park here on a, on a big town square here including a really cool view on, on the sky actually here if you look above it's like you're really walking outside really well done now if you compare this to IMG World of Adventure for example this is a very big difference actually now from here you can actually go to all the different kind of areas. There's for example Gotham City. On the right we have Cartoon Junction. There's also, I'm not sure where it is, but there's also a Dynamite Gulch with rides based on the Looney Tunes. Yeah, Cartoon Junction here on the left is actually home to rides like a Scooby-Doo, Tom and Jerry rides for example. The Gotham City, which I just talked about, is home to uh, Batman rides. There's also, a f at the far right, at the back, there's also Metropolis, which is home to Superman rides and other DC superhero stuff. And on the left here somewhere, but I'm not sure where exactly, is also the uh, Flintstones area named Bedrock or something like that. But we'll check it out later. First, uh, let's explore uh, the park here and start with the Metropolis area, which will be on the right somewhere there. So here we are at Metropolis. Now, earlier this year, I've been to Park Warner in Madrid, which is another Warner Bros. themed park. And they also have a Metropolis area there with rides like Lex Luthor, the Top Spin, or the Superman VNM Fly uh, Flawless Coaster. Now that part looked okay there, but a bit dull to me, whereas this area here, from first sight already, it looks pretty impressive. It, it, it really, yeah, it really feels like you're walking in Metropolis at night or something like that. Look at this, really amazing. It's amazing what, what, what being indoor with all the lighting and such can do actually. Now, the first ride of the day will be uh, this one here on the left, which is uh, Superman 360 Battle for Metropolis. 
Now this ride is, I believe, a 360 degree cinema where you're standing, so a bit similar to the Circle Vision theaters from, from Disney at Epcot. Or in the past, uh, at Disneyland Paris, for example, with Visionarium on the location where Buzz Lightyear Laser Blast is right now. But anyway, let's have a look inside and see what this is. Okay, Superman 360, a nice ride. It's, yeah, like I said, 360 degree video screen kind of thing. It's a bit like the Visionarium it used to be at uh, Disneyland Paris uh, before it became uh, Buzz Lightyear's Lasers, Laser Sh Buzz Lightyear. I'm not sure what the name anymore is. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> It's, it's, a, it's a bit a similar concept, just here is uh, with 3D glasses and a lot more action. But, but first you're actually standing in a, like a, just a normal room with some video screens. And then during the, the show suddenly those walls disappear and you're in a giant 360 degree uh, screen actually wrapped around you. Uh, with a lot of action going on with Superman saving uh, Metropolis from some kind of... Uh, intergalactic threat i think it's brain 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 something i'm not sure what the, who the villain was but anyway it was it was a cool concept it's 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 not a very spectacular ride but anyway it's, it's enjoyable you you it's it's a nice ride you can do once it's nothing you can it's nothing i want to do twice today but it's enjoyable to see once so first ride of the day is done so time for some more action and it's not too far away as the next ride here in Metropolis is uh, right in front of us at the end of the street here. That there is the entrance to a Justice League War World Attacks. Now what is this? Well basically it's a trackless dark ride and that's really all I know about this ride. So let's have a look inside and see what this has to offer. Justice League War World Attacks, great, great dark ride actually. It's basically just a DC version of The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man at Universal Studios uh, in Orlando. Or no, the Island of Adventure in Orlando actually. The ride system is, is almost practically the same. It's not exactly the same, but it's very, very similar. Also the whole ride with the, the, the blend of, of screens, 3D screens and, and, and practical sets is very similar. The whole storyline, of course, is also very similar. Here is Justice League trying to protect the city from some kind of villains and stuff. And it's a very action-packed ride with a lot of movements uh, and a lot of things happening on the screens and such. However, I think I'm a bigger fan still of the Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man at Universal in Orlando because somehow the mix between the screens and the practical effects here or maybe a bit less good as, as the ones in Orlando actually there. The mix is really good. It almost blends uh, into each other here. It's on some moments a bit clear that you're 
from going from this practical set to a screen. But anyway, it's still a very, very good dark ride. So well done, Warner Bros. World. And from one big ride to another, as right across the street here is Green Lantern Galactic Odyssey. Now, for those who know Soren in Disney Parks or Volatime in Europa Park or Emmet Flying Adventure in Lego Parks, for example, this is basically the same actually. So it's a flying theater but based on the Green Lantern. So let's check it out. Okay, wow, seriously, this flying theater here behind me, uh, two days ago I did the worst flying theater uh, in the world, in Ferrari World, today here next door to Ferrari World in Warner Bros World I did the best flying theater in the world at this moment. This one is amazing. I, uh, I'm really surprised how much movement uh, this system is able to make. It's the same ride system as Voletarium in, in Europa Park, for example. But the movement is so much more forceful, so much more powerful, so much more intense. The, the whole movie is, is so much better. There's so much more action packed in it. It's really an amazing, amazing flying theater, really. And with that, it's time to move on to the next area in the park, the place to be for all Batman fans out there, which is Gotham City. So right from uh, Metropolis, you enter here in Gotham City. And look at this, we're right in the middle of Gotham City. It feels amazing to walk around here, really. All right, so this area here uh, is home to four rides, actually. So there's a Joker Fun House, a name that already makes it very clear what it is. Then there's the Riddler Revolution, a Zamperla Disco Coaster. At the back of Gotham City, there's also a Scarecrow Scare Raid, which is a Zamperla Super Air Race. And the biggest ride of the park is actually located at the back here of this street, which is a Batman's Night Flight, so a really interesting dark ride. And yeah, let's just go straight to that one, as I'm really hyped for this ride. Now, what is this ride actually? Well, uh, it's basically a dark ride uh, with a KUKA arm system, which is similar to Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey at uh, Universal Parks. I've done that ride in Universal Orlando already, and that one is, is, is really just brilliant. So I'm, I'm extremely hyped actually for this one here. And I hope it lives up to the expectations, but yeah, that will be kind of difficult because Forbidden Journey is really good, but yeah, let's see.
So Batman's Night Flight, uh, it's a really good KUKA arm based dark ride. It's very, very similar to uh, Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. There's a, a lot of action going on. It's an action-packed adventure. And the only minor thing that I didn't like here was the, the blending between the screens and the practical sets, because that's a bit better in, in Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey, for example. But the practical sets itself here looked actually better than the ones in Orlando. So this one has, has some major advantages compared to uh, Forbidden Journey, while Forbidden Journey also has some other advantages. But both of them are very equally good. So it's a really, really great, really great dark ride here. Amazing, really. So next ride here is the Riddler Revolution, which is a Zamperla disco coaster. It looks like a pretty cool one, considering the fact that the part of it is... Yeah, yeah, the whole ride, of course, is indoors because it's an indoor park. But um, the middle part of the Zampla Disco Coaster here is even more indoor. <laughs> I know that sounds ridiculous, but <laughs> it's the case. We don't really see the rides operating right now, but let's check it out. Let's find the entrance. So the Riddler Revolution here, the Zamperla Disco Coaster, it's a, it's a nice one, it's nicely themed. You're yeah, inside of some kind of warehouse it seems. Now the ride itself is not that spectacular, of course, it's just a Zamperla Disco Coaster. I've done so many of these already in the world. It's a fun ride of course, but nothing too special. But they could have done some more uh, with effects and such, you know, big hall here. But there's not really much happening uh, in, in terms of lighting and such. There is a few things happening, but it's not... They, they could have done more in this big hall. Uh, that's a bit of a shame, but nevertheless, great uh, ride. It's a fun Zampala Disco Coaster, nicely themed. A lot better than um, some other uh, Zampala Disco Coaster, for example. But anyway, uh, enjoyable ride. Next up here, right in front of us, is the Joker Fun House. Obviously a fun house. I mean, <laughs> what else would it be? Let's go check it out. I'm, I'm not sure if it's going to be a good fun house. I heard from some that it's a bit disappointing maybe, but let's check it out ourselves.
okay what can i say about the joker fun house it's pretty boring there is not much happening it's uh it seems also the the halfway at the fun house yeah you're not able to actually access it so it's only half of the fun house which is open at this moment uh, the start is like a pre-show that was kind of nice but afterwards it's just kind of boring because you, you start in a, in a mirror maze but actually there is not much maze to it because you yeah you enter in a whole group so you just have to follow the people uh, in front of you there is yeah it's just ridiculous because you, you didn't have to look for the uh, exit because you just have to follow the people in front of you the whole group in front of you which is just ridiculous actually then afterwards it's a very small uh, fun house portion but the biggest portion seems to be closed at this moment not sure why but anyway uh, joker fun house uh, it was not that fun but all right that looks a lot more fun here is this one scarecrow scare rate which is uh, a zamperla air race ride which we already did a few times uh, this trip because a lot of parks seem to like uh, the zamperla air race here but this is one is kind of a special one because it's a super air race actually because uh, the difference with the normal air race is the fact that this one goes uh, much higher and goes up in the air actually. So let's check this one out. behind me scarecrow scare rage or something like that the sample the super air race it's it's basically nothing more different than a normal air race actually the fact that it's higher doesn't really add a lot of value to do the ride anyway the fact where i'm really frustrated about here is the operations but that's in all parts in the uae so far the operations are extremely bad there was actually no line at all uh, at the right behind me and the ride sequence is actually really really short uh, especially compared to other air race rides but still anyway we got uh, 15 minutes uh, from entering the ride to exiting the ride which is really extremely long just for this kind of ride where there's no line it's ridiculous, really ridiculous. They are dispatching the rides really like on a, on a snail pace. It's such a big issue in the UAE in all parks here. It's, it's, something really has to change about that. Okay, we're in a restaurant here and there is a turnstile. I'm not sure why. <laughs> Strange. <laughs> but anyway, let's get some food. Okay, so it seems it's just uh, teaming because this is a uh, team to a metro station. I thought it had a purpose, but apparently it doesn't. This is the Hall of Doom, by the way, in the Gotham City area, where we are going to get some uh, Thai basil rice kind of thing not sure exactly how it was called and some spring rolls mm, I love food so this is a Thai basil chicken rice kind of thing it looked better on the picture than in real life and actually it doesn't really have a lot of taste and it's not spicy at all actually so bit of a disappointment but anyway
So here we are again in the main area, or the hub area, sorry. The, I think it was called Warner Bros Plaza, I'm not sure anymore. There's a restaurant also here on our left, Starlight Restaurant. This is really a very beautiful area here. So now we're going to the Cartoon Junction area with rides like the Tom and Jerry Swiss Cheese uh, Spinning Coaster and the Scooby-Doo Dark Ride. So let's check this one out. And I almost actually forgot that there's actually another dark ride here, which is Any Mayhem. So let's try out this one first. Any Mayhem, a very nice shooting dark ride where you have to shoot on targets with a, a scanner. It's more like, yeah, the, the story is you're, you're part of an Acme delivery kind of thing and you have to help uh, them with delivering packages. It's a very nice uh, concept. Uh, it's also with 3D glasses, so it's, it's a bit, it's, yeah, with screens, it's a mix of screens and practical uh, sets. Very nice uh, ride. Um, the only thing that was a bit the weird was the fact that if you point your scanner, there's like a, a red uh, dot uh, to see where you're pointing at. But I could only see it with my left eye, probably because of the 3D glasses, but that was a bit uh, unfortunate. But anyway, it's a very nice, very fun, uh, interactive shooting dark ride, especially for kids. It's a lot of fun. Next ride we're doing here today is the Scooby-Doo dark ride here. I'm not sure if this dark ride is actually the same as the one in Panic Warner in Madrid. When I was there, that ride was closed, so I couldn't do this. This one is called Scooby-Doo Museum of Mysteries. I believe it's Dracula's dark ride, but I'm not entirely sure. But we'll have to check it out. Let's see you after the ride.
Okay, so Scooby-Doo, very nice dark ride. It's not the best dark ride in the park, but anyway, it's a very nice trackless dark ride with a fun story, some fun scenes, fun effects. It's it's just a very nice uh, dark ride to do with your kids, uh, of course, with the Scooby-Doo team. But it's it's nothing too special compared to other dark rides. There are better dark rides in this park, but anyway, enjoyable. Now from the Scooby-Doo ride, let's go to the next ride here, right next door, which is a Tom and Jerry Swiss cheese spin. It's a Zamperla spinning coaster. Now the ride is uh, the same kind of ride type as, for example, the coaster in the Cedar Point, but I'm not sure if it's the same model. But anyway, let's check it out. Okay, we just waited 40 minutes for uh, Tom and Jerry Swiss spin cheese. No, Swiss cheese spin. <laughs> anyway, it's a it's a fun uh, roller coaster. It's a, like I said, the Zampola spinning coaster. It's not the same model, I think, as the one in Cedar Point because that's more like a wild mouse kind of model. This more is seems to be like a custom design. I'm not sure actually, but anyway, it's a very fun coaster. The inside of the the ride. Uh, it, it seems it's very comparable to like for example um, Euroset, the Kang Kang coaster in, in Euro, Europa Park uh, with all the yeah, cardboard things you see and, and the lighting and the, the things that light up on those cardboards. Very comparable to that one. Um, but the ride itself it's, it's a fun spinning coaster. It's, it's not long and it's not worth 40 minutes wait but anyway it's a fun ride so if the line would not be too long i would do it again if the line is again like that nope not for me but anyway fun coaster On to the next area, Dynamite Gulch, which is more like the Looney Tunes kind of area. Here we already see the Intamin Family Suspended Coaster, Fast and Furry Us. Looks pretty well themed with all the rock work here. And here's the entrance to the Intamin Family Suspended Coaster, Fast and Furry Us. There's actually only one other family suspended coaster from Intamin and that's a Draaierkungen in Jurs Summerland in Denmark. Then that one is pretty good. I'm not sure if this one will be similar. I don't think this one is similar. But anyway, let's check it out.
Okay, the ride here in Dynamite, my Dynamite Gulch here, the suspended coaster, uh, Fast and Furious. It's a fun family coaster, it's nothing too spectacular. It's a bit shaky maybe, it's, it's not the smoothest one, but I've had less smoother rides, so it's, it's pretty okay-ish. It's a, it's a nice coaster, it's, it's fun, it's not too long, but it's just fun. Now after the last area in the park here to explore that is Bedrock, home to the Flintstones. It's so many years ago since I saw a Flintstones movie or a cartoon or anything. But it's nice to see this here. Very well done, very well done, very nice. There's only one ride here in, in Bedrock and that is uh, the Flintstones Bedrock River Adventure which is a water ride, like a flume, uh, log flume kind of thing. So let's check this one out and see how wet we'll get. With that we did the last ride here at uh, Warner Bros World, the Flintstones Bedrock River Adventure, which is a water ride, just a log flume ride. It's, mo yeah, it's mostly just one drop at the end, it's not a big drop, it's a pretty small drop, but you still get mm, not too wet, but you still get a bit wet. Um, but before the drop there is a lot of dark ride scenes uh, with all Flintstones uh, related scenes and stuff. It's about uh, the Flintstones uh, celebrating a stone tenniel parade or something like that. I'm not sure exactly what the story was, but it looked very nice actually. The, the sets are very well done, except for the fact that there are not really animatronics. They're, the sets are very static, but anyway, they, they look nice. It's, it's a nice looking ride. It's a fun ride. It's a bit like Splash Mountain, but without the big drop. Anyway, enjoyed the ride. I got a little bit wet, but it's already dry again, so not too wet, of course.
that, we're ending our day here at Warner Bros. World in Abu Dhabi at Yas Island. It was a magnificent day, a magnificent park. The, the park is really like the most beautiful indoor park I've ever seen. Yesterday I told the same about SeaWorld in Abu Dhabi, but this one, it's just amazing. Now, the park itself, it, it's beautiful. The rides are very fun. There are really cool dark rides and such like Batman Night Flight, my favorite ride here or uh, the Green Lantern Flying Theater, which is extremely good, actually the best flying theater I ever did. Now, if you come here for coasters, you will be a bit disappointed as there's only two roller coasters, which are more like family coasters, not really trail rides. So for coasters, you have to go uh, to Ferrari World here in Abu Dhabi, for example. But Warner Bros. World is more about the experience, about being in those environments like Cartoon Junction or Metropolis or Gotham City or a bedrock or anything like that. This park is just a total package. Now the only thing that's a bit of a downside and that's with all parks here in the UAE is the operations. They're extremely bad, really. The, the capacity on the rides is awful because of this. It's That's just a minor downside or maybe a bigger downside, I don't know. Anyway, I enjoyed my day here in this park. I enjoyed my trip here to the UAE because this was the last park on our trip. Tomorrow we're flying back to Belgium and then it's a countdown to a next adventure, next theme park adventure, but you'll see some videos about that next adventure soon. Anyway, I enjoyed the UAE. I will for sure be back because there's still like a real Madrid world, which I want to do. Or for example, a mad pursuit at Motion Gate, which was closed or Mission Ferrari at Ferrari World, which was closed. Anyway, I'll be back. The parks here are amazing. Some parks are not that amazing, but anyway, I enjoyed my trip here. I bought way too many souvenirs. So now it's time to go home and uh, earn some money again. <laughs> See you soon. I cannot believe I'm finally here back again in front of the entrance of Universal Studios. It's been six and a half years ago and here I finally am again ready for a new series of vlogs full of amazing parks. I hope you are ready for some great things ahead because this is going to be amazing. <laughs> <laughs>